As fans gather outside of the Camp Nou, voicing their support for club captain Lionel Messi and their anger at club president Josip Bartomeu, the international eyeballs on La Liga have been locked firmly on Barcelona. As we covered in a recent video, Barca have been woefully mismanaged over a five-year period and are now threatened with a decade of stagnation and underachievement by their own high standards. There are still glimpses of optimism for Barca though. The club posted the highest revenue any club has ever recorded over a 12 month span in their most recent set of financial accounts. There are suggestions that Lionel Messi may well stick around for at least another season, and Josip Bartomeu will almost certainly be booted out in 2021, even if he somehow manages to hang on for that long without being chased out of Catalonia by an angry mob carrying pitchforks and torches. Perhaps if it wasn't for Barcelona stealing so many headlines, more people outside of Spain would have noticed the rapid destruction of one of La Liga's greatest institutions, Valencia. Here in England, football fans can often become totally immersed in stories relating to the Premier League, rendering us somewhat oblivious to the happenings of other leagues. Since the end of the season, Valencia have essentially had their starting 11 cut in half, and there are suggestions that further decimation of their first team could well be on the horizon. The most widely reported departure in England has been the sale of Spanish international forward Rodrigo since he joined Premier League new boys Leeds United for a reported 35 million euros. Losing an important player to a newly promoted team speaks volumes about Valencia's current predicament, although the club did at least get fair value for the 29-year-old. The same cannot be said of their other key departures. The most notable perhaps being Danny Parejo, who spent almost a decade at the Mestalla, spending much of that time as one of the most highly regarded central midfielders in La Liga. Following nine years of service, Valencia's club captain left on a free transfer this summer, joined by tough tackling former Arsenal midfielder Francis Coquelin. Between them, the duo made 83 appearances for the club last season, forming the backbone of their midfield. To add insult to injury, they both signed for Valencia's local rivals Villarreal, a team who finished fifth last season and who seemed to be heading in the totally opposite direction to them. Meanwhile, Argentina international Ezequiel Garay departed in June following some harsh words and debate between the player and the club with regards to how his contract situation was handled, despite the fact he had racked up more than a century of appearances for Los Mercia Lajos. Following the departure of Danny Parejo, the midfielder uploaded a tearful video in which he said he didn't want to leave Valencia, that he had intended to retire at the Mestalla, but that the club had no intention of keeping him on. Valencia's only response was to remove any trace of Parejo's existence from outside their ground, including an image of him lifting the Copa del Rey in 2019 in an attempt to erase the memory of the midfielder's nine years at the club. Unsurprisingly, it didn't work. Indeed, Parejo's tearful goodbye was the final straw for many Valencia fans, more than 1,000 of whom turned up outside the club's ground, lit vigils, unveiled an RIP Valencia banner, and held a minute silence, which left the Spanish press with little doubt as to how Valencia's fans felt about the management of their beloved club. So today, in light of a number of requests, we ask the question, what on earth is going on at Valencia? What one first needs to know is that Valencia are a club that are no strangers to chaos. Both on and off the pitch, there is rarely a dull moment at the Mestalla, a perennial cocktail of passion pouring down from the stands, a roller coaster of performances and results on the pitch, and very often a catastrophe in terms of financial mismanagement behind the scenes. It's important to point out that most Valencia fans consider Valencia to be Spanish, if not European giants, and with some justification. Valencia is the third biggest city in Spain, trailing only Madrid and Barcelona. A beautiful and historic city, which has twice served as Spain's capital, the city of Valencia itself is home to roughly 800,000 people, meanwhile the metropolitan area has a population in excess of 1.6 million, making it significantly larger than Seville and Bilbao. Valencia Club de Football haven't always reflected this fact, although they have certainly tasted significant success over the years. Valencia are Spain's fifth most successful club in terms of overall trophy counts and league titles, although it's important to note that there is a fairly large gulf between Valencia and fifth and everyone below them, particularly in terms of domestic achievements. Valencia's real glory days actually came in the 1940s when the club won three La Liga titles in just six seasons, which they followed up with consecutive second place finishes inspired by the goals of their lethal frontman and club legend Edmundo Suarez. A second golden generation, if you like, arrived in the early 2000s, when Valencia won two La Liga titles in three seasons under Rafa Benitez, as well as reaching two Champions League finals and winning the UEFA Cup with a squad that boasted the likes of Roberto Ayala, Vicente and Pablo Aymar. Even during this period of immense success on the pitch though, all was not well at Valencia. 
Rafa Benitez endured a fractured relationship with club president James Orti, and in 2004, he decided he had had enough and accepted a job off from Liverpool. He was replaced by a recently departed Chelsea boss Claudio Ranieri, who wouldn't last long at the Mestalla, as Valencia dropped from 1st to 7th place. What's more, throughout their period of success, Valencia had been accumulating considerable debt, and as a result faltered, the club's debt pal only grew. By 2008, when young head coach Unai Emery took the top job at Valencia, reports broke claiming that Valencia now owed the bank's 400 million euros, and the players' wages had gone unpaid. The club took out further loans just in order to pay their players, but no one was quite sure where the cash to pay off their debts was going to come from. The most obvious course of action was to sell some of the team's most valuable assets, and in the space of just a couple of years, David Villa joined Barcelona, David Silva signed for Manchester City, and Juan Mata agreed terms with Chelsea. Those are just three of the most high-profile examples of Valencia's mass cash-raising exercise, but it was still only enough money to put a dent in their huge debts, not clear them out altogether. The best representation of Valencia's mismanagement is surely the new Mestalla, which stands as an enormous shell-like monument to financial recklessness in the heart of Valencia. Then club president Juan Sola unveiled plans for a new 80,000-seater stadium back in November 2006, and they broke ground in August 2007 with a planned completion date in early summer 2009 in time for the 2009-10 season. Well, we're now about to begin the 2020-21 season, and the new Mestalla remains uncompleted and unoccupied. The design and construction of the new ground, which was supposed to give Valencia a home, which could rival the Camp Nou and the Bernabeu, was one of the primary reasons for Valencia's subsequent financial strife. Construction was halted in February 2009 due to financial problems, with the modified design reducing the capacity to 61,500 in 2013 and down again to just 54,000 in 2017, meaning the new Mestalla would only have 5,600 more seats than the Mestalla, and that instead of being the third largest stadium in Spain behind the Camp Nou and the Bernabeu, it will now only be the seventh largest. In May 2014, it appeared as though Valencia had finally found their saviour. Singaporean businessman Peter Lim acquired a controlling interest in Valencia, purchasing 70.4% of the club's shares, having reached an agreement with Spain's fourth largest bank, Bankia, who effectively controlled the club up to that point, as a result of being Valencia's main creditors. Lim accumulated the vast majority of his $2 billion fortune through the sale of his shares in Vilmar International Limited, a Singaporean agribusiness which has received widespread condemnation, particularly from environmental groups. Vilmar's primary source of income is through the cultivation of palm oil, and the company has been accused of causing deliberate forest fires, mass deforestation, and numerous human rights violations, with Greenpeace labelling Vilmar as the biggest and dirtiest palm oil trader in the world. Lim invested $10 million in the company as a startup in the early 1990s, and cashed out for a whopping $1.5 billion in 2010, at the height of the commodities boom, making him extremely wealthy. Lim was hailed as Valencia's knight in shining armour upon his arrival, supposedly clearing 200 million euros of debt on his first day as part of an overall initial investment of 420 million euros into the club. In Lim's first season in charge, Valencia saw an immediate uptick in form, climbing from 8th to 4th place under the guidance of his first appointment, Nuno Espirito Santo. Fans sang his name and hopes were high, but the honeymoon would be short-lived. The following season was a disaster, as Valencia went through four different managers, including Gary Neville, suffering a humiliating 7-0 defeat to Barcelona, and ending the season with their worst league finish since the club was relegated in 1986. The following summer, Valencia sold key players like Shakodra Mustafi, Paco Alcacer, and Andre Gomez. Supporters were told that the club had to balance the books, but once again, Valencia went through four managers the following season, including those who took caretaker charge, getting battered 4-0 at home in an especially embarrassing defeat to Ibar, and finishing in 12th place for the second consecutive season. By this point, the Valencia fans were starting to ask one or two questions of their saviour. The billionaire businessman had a close relationship with George Mendes, hence the early arrival of Nuno Espirito Santo, and the club also signed a number of Mendes' clients. There was a feeling early on that Mendes now had too much influence at the Mestalla, and when results turned, Valencia fans began to question whether Mendes' clients' allegiances were with the club or their agent. Lim led some credence to their suspicions in 2015, when Valencia's backroom staff revolted against Mendes' increasing influence and demanded action, only for Nuno Espirito Santo to side with Mendes. As a result, three key figures departed, including club legend Roberto Ayala. 
Ayala had been hired as technical director and as a scout by his former club, and it was telling to Valencia fans that none of the three departees were replaced, suggesting that the club was now just at the behest of Jorge Mendes and however he wished to move around his clients. Accusations of prioritising his business relationships over the good of the club extend beyond Lim's close ties to just George Mendes, though. Valencia's two club presidents under Lim's watch have both been Singaporean businessmen with no prior experience in football, both of whom have drawn supporters out at times, particularly the current incumbent, Anil Murthy, who was appointed him in April 2017. Then there's the appointment of Gary Neville, who had no experience in first team management and couldn't speak Spanish, but was a close friend and business partner of Peter Lips. In 2014, Lim acquired a 50% stake in non-league side Salford City, going into business with Manchester United's famed Class of 92. When Lim arrived, the Class of 92 released a statement saying they knew Peter Lim well and had been doing business with him for more than 10 years. That certainly appears to be the case, as Lim owns 29% of the investment firm Rowsley, which owns a 75% stake in three of the Class of 92's hotel football assets, having paid £29.1 million for the privilege. What's more, Lim is also believed to have invested £40 million for a 75% stake in Neville's St. Michael's development in Manchester, featuring a five-star hotel with 191 bedrooms, 181 high-end apartment buildings, and almost 23,000 square feet of office space. Clearly, Neville and Lim's business interests are firmly intertwined, and his appointment was seen as yet more evidence of cronyism among many Valencia fans, whose fears were somewhat confirmed by the team's appalling form under Neville's stewardship. There's also Lim's relationship with the Man City owner Sheikh Mansour, to whom Valencia have sold fan favourites Nicolas Otamendi and Ferran Torres in the last five years. Lim is also said to have taken personal responsibility for the negotiations between Valencia and Man City with regards to the sale of Ferran Torres, prompting further question marks as to whether Lim was courting personal favour and business interests over the interests of the club. And matters were hardly helped when Torres hit out at his former employers by labelling Valencia as crooked upon his arrival in the Premier League. Despite all these problems, Lim struck lucky in the summer of 2017, or made a very shrewd appointment, depending upon your outlook, with the arrival of former Villarreal boss Marcelino. In one fell swoop, Valencia became a force again. Impressive signings were made, such as Jeffrey Condogbia and Goncalo Guaidas on loan, as well as Juventus goalkeeper Neto and former Arsenal midfielder Francis Coquelin, both for modest fees. Marcelino fired Valencia back into competitiveness, finishing the season in the Champions League places, following consecutive 12th place finishes, just three points behind Real Madrid, and miles clear of Villarreal in fifth. The following season was arguably even more impressive, as after a difficult start, Valencia battled back not only to qualify for the Champions League once again, but also to claim a famous Copa del Rey title with victory against Barcelona, the club's first major trophy since 2008. You might think that would make Marcelino the toast of every dining table in Valencia, and for 99% it did. Unfortunately, the 1% was Peter Lim, who for some reason decided to sack Valencia's miracle working boss. Marcelino later stated that he felt he had been sacked for winning the Copa del Rey, bizarrely, as Lim had instructed him not to take the competition seriously and to focus on Champions League qualification. Apparently, Lim didn't even phone Marcelino or any of the Valencia players to congratulate them upon their success. Other reports suggest that Lim sacked Marcelino due to him making public comments about Valencia's transfer dealings that Lim took effect to, essentially arguing that Valencia couldn't hope to compete whilst routinely selling their best players. Marcelino was sacked at the start of last season and replaced by Albert Calades, who wouldn't even make it to the end of the season as Valencia fell from competitive 4th place finishes to a miserable ninth place finish despite being dumped out of the Copa del Rey at the quarter-final stage, presumably much to Lim's delight. As tensions at the Mestalla reached boiling point a couple of weeks ago, with fans literally gathering outside of the ground and demanding Peter Lim's head, his daughter decided to take to social media, which of course could only end well. The delightfully named Kim Lim posted on her Instagram account stating, Here again, some Valencia fans are scolding and cursing my family and I. Don't they get it? The club is ours and we can do anything we want with it and nobody can say anything. <sighs> yeah, that's not a good look. The fatal errors in football ownership are either running a club nothing like a business, creating mounds of debt you can never expect to repay, or running it exactly like any other business, treating fans as nothing more than consumers. A football club isn't an ordinary business. It has generations of families emotionally woven into the fabric of it. 
I often got into this argument with people who don't support a football club during the early years of the Alam's ownership of Hull City, when results on the pitch were good, but their disdain for supporters and total disregard for their views was already clear, to many at least. Kim Lim later deleted that Instagram post, but of course, you can't really delete anything on social media these days, and the Lim family appear to have confirmed all of Valencia fan suspicions. The fatal flaw has been made, and recovering from that is next to impossible. Peter Lim claims that the recent global pandemic has seen a significant reduction to Valencia's income, which is no doubt true. As a result, according to club president Anil Murthy, Valencia had to cut their cloth accordingly, with reports suggesting that they are looking to cut their wage budget by 40%, with their players' most recent paychecks having been replaced by IOU notes, according to a number of reports. Valencia may have lofty expectations, too lofty, some may suggest, given the enormous financial gulf between themselves and La Liga's Big Two and even Atletico Madrid, but they surely have a right to ask why their traditionally much smaller rivals Villarreal are able to so easily poach their midfield engine room for peanuts, or why such a talented young player like Ferran Torres was allowed to get into the final year of his contract and subsequently leave for such a discount in modern terms. To put it in terms that may be easier for a lot of our subscribers to understand, the situation at Valencia is roughly akin to Arsenal rather than looking to strengthen as they have done this summer, instead appointing Nigel Pearson as their new first team boss, selling Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to a newly promoted La Liga side, bidding farewell to Bakayo Saka or Gabriel Martinelli for far below market value, losing Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira for £6 million, and then still looking to make further sales. It's a remarkable set of circumstances, and one which leaves Valencia fans fearing the worst. At this point, it is hard to see anything other than a long, hard season for Valencia, and most likely a bottom half finish. Things could get very ugly at the Mestalla in the coming months, especially if the team make a turgid start to the campaign under their new boss, Javi Grazia. Barcelona fans may think they have things bad, and they are undoubtedly being run by a cretin, but Valencia are the most dysfunctional, demoralised and depleted team in La Liga right now, and that takes some doing. Peter Lim's honeymoon period isn't just over at Valencia, five years on, the relationship has become one of deep and bitter resentment, and Valencia fans are filing for divorce. So that's it for today's video. There is actually a great deal more I could cover on the subject and plenty more in my notes, but it's 10 o'clock at night and I have to come up with a new video, research it and write it before I go to bed. Plus I know some people don't like it when the videos go above around the 15 minute mark. So I'll call it a day there. Thank you all very much as ever for tuning in. Hopefully you learnt a bit more about the situation of Valencia, whether you knew anything about it previously or not, and maybe we'll have an updated version at some stage in the future. Hit the like button if you enjoyed or found the video interesting, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to hitc 7s And as always, you can also follow me on either Twitter or Instagram, where the username is simply at hitc 7s